on World News Tonight. Media meltdown. Facebook picks up the pieces following fallout from a major shutdown. Catastrophic leakage. California races against time to save an ecosystem muddled with oil. Fighting the virus. Australia takes the first step towards living with COVID with the help of a brand new solution. Illustrious performances. Singing phrases for their motherland, Chinese artists steal the show. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We start off today's coverage with the massive social media outage. Facebook battled dueling crises as potential billions of users were impacted when its dominant social network went offline for seven hours and the company fought against the whistleblower's damning revelations. Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp lit up again after a nearly six-hour outage on Monday. Facebook apologised and initially could not say what caused the failure. But the company later said the problem was a faulty configuration change. CEO Mark Zuckerberg posted on Facebook, quote, Sorry for the disruption today. I know how much you rely on our services to stay connected with the people you care about. The outage was the second blow in days to the social media giant. On Sunday, a whistleblower accused the company of prioritising profit over clamping down on hate speech and misinformation. Shares fell nearly 5% for Facebook, but later rose half a percent in after-hours trade after the platforms rebooted. Several Facebook employees who declined to be named said that they believe that the outage was caused by an internal mistake in how internet traffic is routed to its systems. Facebook lost about 545,000 US dollars in US ad revenue per hour during the outage. That's according to ad measurement firm Standard Media Index. Security experts said an unintentional mistake or sabotage by an insider were both plausible. Over in the United States, more oil from a massive offshore spill landed on the Southern California shore as officials investigated whether a ship anchor striking a pipeline could have triggered the leak. A major oil leak off the coast of Southern California that has killed wildlife and fouled beaches may have been caused by a ship anchor. That's according to officials looking into the leak of more than 3,000 barrels of oil from a pipeline. The pipeline is connected to an offshore rig owned by a unit of Amplify Energy. On Monday, the company's CEO, Martin Wiltshire, said it was possible a ship anchor could have struck the pipeline. Dozens of container ships have been stranded off the coast recently, awaiting their turn to enter the port. Wilshire thinks they are close to finding the source of the leak. We have examined more than 8,000 feet of pipe um, and we have isolated one specific area of significant interest. Um, we did this primarily through ROV to this point, but we are sending divers down now to verify some uh, what we what we are seeing via the ROV. The spill has closed beaches in Southern California and caused dead fish and birds to wash up on shore. One beach south of Los Angeles had 13 square miles of ocean and portions of its coastline covered in oil. Magnolia Marsh, a wetland home to 90 bird species, is also under threat. Cleanup teams on Monday were racing against time to contain the spill as a storm approached. They've deployed more than 2,000 feet of floating barriers known as oil booms, which help contain and slow the oil flows. Still in the US, President Biden accused Republican lawmakers of taking reckless position in refusing to join Democrats in voting to raise the government's $28.4 trillion debt limit as the US faces the risk of historic default in just two weeks. Can you guarantee that the U.S. will not reach the debt ceiling, that that will not happen? No, I can't. President Joe Biden on Monday said he couldn't guarantee that the U.S. won't breach its debt limit unless Republicans join Democrats in voting to raise it. That's up to Mitch McConnell. And called members of the opposing party reckless and dangerous, accusing Senate Republicans led by minority leader Mitch McConnell of bringing the country closer to what would be a historic and catastrophic default. They need to stop 
playing Russian roulette with the U.S. economy. Less than two weeks ago, McConnell made that exact same demand of Democrats. Don't play Russian roulette with our economy. But Senate Republicans in recent weeks have blocked action to raise the debt ceiling multiple times, saying they do want action taken but will not help. They're threatening to use a procedural power called the filibuster. You don't want to help save the country? Get out of the way so you don't destroy it. In an open letter on Monday, McConnell repeated his argument that Democrats should pass a debt limit increase on their own using the reconciliation process, which would allow a bill to raise the debt ceiling to pass on a simple majority of 51 votes. It's hypocritical, dangerous and disgraceful. But Biden noted that Democrats voted with Republicans to raise the debt limit during the administration of Donald Trump, even though they opposed deep tax cuts that added to the debt. Raising the debt limit comes down to paying what we already owe, not anything new. Biden said he intended to speak with McConnell about the debt ceiling. Meanwhile, concerns over a possible default on the nation's debt contributed to Monday's steep drop in the stock market. Ratings agency Moody's has warned that a failure to raise the debt ceiling could imperil the economy and lead to the loss of almost 6 million U.S. jobs. Rather than scrapping a Trump-era trade deal with China, the Biden administration has made it clear that it wants to maintain at least part of the agreement. The U.S. trade representative says Washington has to keep the pressure on Beijing to ensure it meets the pledges it agreed to under the deal. The Biden administration has been making clean breaks with the policies of the former administration in many areas, but not when it comes to trade with China. While the U.S. plans to initiate fresh trade talks with Beijing, it will maintain tariffs on Chinese imports as it presses Beijing to fulfill its pledges to buy more American goods and services. President Biden's China trade policies were revealed for the first time Monday during a speech by U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. But above all else, we must defend to the hilt our economic interests. And that means taking all steps necessary to protect ourselves against the waves of damage inflicted over the years through unfair competition. We need to be prepared to deploy all tools and explore the development of new ones, including through collaboration with other economies and countries. She also stressed that Washington will address Beijing's failure to keep its promises under a phase one trade deal that was inked last year during President Trump's term in office. However, Tai explained the U.S. will not pursue phase two negotiations over China's state subsidies and other structural issues. I think that we are going to have uh, and intend have to have really honest conversations with China about all of the elements of the phase one agreement, these are commitments that China made. Uh, they are commitments that um, our uh, businesses um, and uh, workers in certain sectors have looked to. Um, and um, um, we will have to address where this relationship goes from the starting point. The Biden administration has spent months reviewing its China trade policy, including the tariffs levied by the former Trump administration on some 370 billion U.S. dollars worth of Chinese imports. The imports in question range from electronics and furniture to items that are part of the supply chain for many U.S. manufacturers. Army drivers have been deployed to drive tankers in the UK to help get deliveries to filling stations starved of fuel amid nationwide panic buying. Military personnel have been deployed in a bid to help tackle the UK's fuel crisis. Uniformed soldiers were seen arriving at one BP oil depot near London on Monday morning. Panic buying of fuel amid reports of a truck driver shortage has triggered chaotic scenes across the country. Long queues built up at many filling stations, with reports of fights between drivers in some locations. By Monday, the situation was reported to be improving. But the Petrol Retailers Association said about 22% of filling stations in and around London were still without fuel. The organisation said it might take a week to 10 days to get stocks back up to normal. Ministers have repeatedly denied that the driver shortage has anything to do with Brexit, saying it is a global problem. However, neighbouring European countries have not seen any queues at gas stations. 
Finance Minister Rishi Sunak says the army drivers are being deployed just as a precaution. He has predicted that the situation will resolve itself. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back. A report by the UN says North Korea continues to evade international sanctions and develop its nuclear and missile capabilities. It has also pointed out the growing humanitarian crisis in the North. The United Nations Security Council says North Korea continues to develop its nuclear and ballistic missile capabilities, evading international sanctions. A panel report on Monday said the regime continues to secure materials from overseas to advance its weapons despite food shortages. The UN Sanctions Committee on North Korea releases its panel of experts report twice a year, and the latest report covers updates on implementation of sanctions from February to August. So the report does not include the regime's series of missile launches in September and October. As for nuclear activities, it says the 5-megawatt nuclear reactor at Yongbyon is inactive, but the panel has detected signs of activity at Yongbyon's uranium enrichment facilities, including radiochemical laboratory facilities. The report also said Pyongyang evaded sanctions through the sophisticated management of the ships used in illicit dealings. It has been reported that the North has bought vessels that have been once owned by South Korean companies through China and other third countries. The report pointed out the growing humanitarian crisis in North Korea due to COVID-19 lockdown measures and international sanctions. Diplomatic sources in Seoul say they are concerned that foreign organizations may be less willing to provide aid to the North due to delays in bringing in goods and an increase in logistical costs. The regime has also reportedly conducted cyber attacks on cryptocurrency exchanges called spear phishing and has attacked COVID-19 vaccine companies. In terms of goods flow, the report says inflow of refined oil products and luxury goods to the north has significantly decreased due to the pandemic and so has the volume of coal trading. The EU is set for an expansion on fighting the COVID-19 pandemic as the European Medical Agency has given the green light on using the Pfizer-BioNTech booster jabs, hoping it would help decrease some skyrocketing infection numbers. For more on this, we have other than a World News Special Correspondent Inuka Ponzer reporting from Cleve in Germany. Inuka. Yes, Shanali. The EU drug regulator said people with a severely weakened immune system may be given a third dose of COVID-19 vaccines made by Pfizer and Moderna at least 28 days after their second dose. The long-awaited guidance comes after several EU member states launched their own booster campaigns with a repeat shot given about six months after initial two-dose coups, although countries have come to widely different conclusions on who is eligible. EMA said the vaccination campaigns, including booster shots, were the prerogative of public health bodies in member states. I think it was hoping to get a fuller picture on the data underpinning its recommendations. Pfizer and BioNTech presented data in their feelings for approval of their booster to the EMA that showed levels of virus-fighting antibodies in the blood of vaccinated people weighing over time and that the third shot was shown to cause a fresh surge in antibodies. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was other than a World News Special Correspondent Inuka Ponzer reporting from Cleve in Germany. Australia is expecting some 300,000 consignments of the brand new COVID-19 pill with most popular states feeling heavy pressure on its healthcare systems with the rising COVID cases. Let's cross over to other than a World News Special Correspondent Timothy Philip reporting from Melbourne in Australia. Timothy. Yes, Jenna. Australia will buy 300,000 courses of Merck and Co's experimental antiviral pill. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said, as Victoria logged the highest number of daily COVID-19 infections of any state in the country since the pandemic began. Molnupiravir, which would be the first oral antiviral medication for COVID-19, if it gets regulatory approval, could halve the chances of dying or being hospitalized for people most at risk of contracting severe COVID-19 according to experts. Morrison said that these treatments mean that the country is going to be able to live with the virus, 
as Australia aims to reopen its borders next month for full, fully vaccinated citizens and permanent residents. A total of 1,763 new infections were reported in Victoria, exceeding the previous daily high of almost 1,500, with the state looking to start reopening once full vaccination levels in its adult population reaches 70%, expected around the end of October from 53% now. Back to you, Shana. All right, thank you. That was other than a Nobel News Special Correspondent Timothy Phillip reporting from Melbourne in Australia. Johnson & Johnson plans to ask U.S. regulators to authorize the booster shots of its single-shot COVID-19 vaccine. The Food and Drug Administration's Expert Advisory Committee is scheduled to meet on October 15th. The roughly 15 million Americans who got J&J's vaccine may need a second shot after all. The New York Times reports Monday, Johnson & Johnson plans to ask U.S. regulators this week to authorize a booster shot of its single-shot COVID-19 vaccine. The Food and Drug Administration's Expert Advisory Committee is scheduled to meet October 15th to discuss whether to grant emergency use authorization for J&J's booster shot. The drug maker declined to comment on the report, saying it has submitted data to U.S. regulators and intends to submit data to other regulators as well. What made J&J's vaccine particularly attractive was that unlike the two-shot regimen required by Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna, it required just one shot. But last month, J&J said an additional shot two months after the first injection boosted effectiveness to 94%. That compares with 70% protection with a single dose. The FDA has already authorized Pfizer and BioNTech's booster dose for certain groups. Moderna submitted its authorization request last month. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. India is the latest country to face a severe energy crisis with the country's power plants running low on supply. Most of India's coal power plants had less than three days of inventory left because the country recently cut down on imports and surging international coal prices. An Italian court suspended proceedings against exiled ex-Catalan leader Carl Puigdemont, arrested last month in Sardinia on a Spanish extradition warrant, pending the outcome of European rulings. The World Trade Organization revised up its forecast for growth of global goods trade this year and in 2022, but warned of a two-track recovery leaving poor countries behind, downside risk from the COVID-19 pandemic and supply chain problems. The Thai Red Cross Society began a vaccination drive for migrant workers and undocumented refugees, with its Secretary General saying that the turnout was high. A federal jury has ordered Tesla to pay more than $130 million in damages to a black former worker, finding he was subjected to a racially hostile work environment. It's the time of the year when the Nobel Prize is given to scientists to honor their groundbreaking research. The first award, the Nobel Prize in Medicine, has been given to scientists who discovered the receptors in the skin that allowed us to sense heat and pressure. These could lead to new findings that can treat chronic pain. Award, the 2021 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, jointly to David Julius and Ardem Pataputian. American scientists David Julius and Artem Patapushan won the 2021 Nobel Prize for Medicine on Monday for the discovery of receptors in the skin that sense temperature and touch and could pave the way for new painkillers. Which is called somatosensation. Their work has helped show how humans convert the physical impact from heat or touch into nerve impulses, the Nobel Assembly said. Julius, a professor at University of California, San Francisco, said the research was inspired by everyday life. Julius used capsaicin, the molecule that makes chili peppers spicy by stimulating a false sensation of heat, to understand the skin sense of temperature. Patapushan, a professor at Scripps Research in California, is credited with finding the cellular mechanism and the underlying gene that translates a mechanical force on our skin into an electric nerve signal. Julius hopes his work will help identify new strategies for treating chronic pain syndromes. 
The prestigious Nobel Prizes were created and funded in the will of Swedish dynamite inventor Alfred Nobel. They have been awarded since 1901. The prize is worth over a million dollars. And finally tonight, a number of pop stars from China's Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan regions took to social media to express good wishes for the country's 72nd National Day, many of whom were performing at the televised National Day Gala. Hong Kong artist Nicholas Se played Chinese drums as he delivered a performance of the song The Yellow Race, an ode Se wrote to the Chinese nationality. He said it's been a dream of his to sing the song as a present to his home country's National Day. Macau artist Nuno Wong was part of a quartet performance that also featured singers from the mainland Hong Kong and Taiwan. The song performed was about the Chinese coming together in solidarity. Taiwan singer Angela Shang expressed excitement of witnessing China's great development and prosperity over recent years. Many of the artists found it a thrill to see the prosperity of their motherland and also having a blast performing their many songs. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shinali. Until then, stay safe and have a good night.